So what you're looking at is a GitOps uh, Git repository. It's called as GitOps Info Demo. And this repository has everything uh, to build the entire infrastructure for an application from ground up. So I'm deploying the EKS cluster. I'm, I'm creating IAM roles that are in AWS resources that are needed by EKS. And then a bunch of applications that are you know goodies for EKS cluster. You want to have ingresses, for example. So uh, maybe you can show right here. Here you can see what I'm deploying. I'm deploying um, all these applications, or maybe you can show Argo CD view here. This is the GitOps uh, way of doing things. When you make any change to the GitOps repository, Argo CD uh, picks those changes and, and applies those changes um, to applications and infrastructure. Uh, so here, uh, not just the Argo CD is at work, uh, there is a another application called as Crossplane. Uh, which is quite similar to Terraform. So using Terraform, you create those resources, you know, you run Terraform plan command and Terraform apply. Similarly, um, Crossplane works in a Kubernetes way. It takes the changes uh, from Argo City. Argo City delivers those changes to Crossplane and Crossplane then takes those uh, infrastructure changes and goes and applies to the AWS. So what does that mean is uh, if I make a change to an IAM role, in the GitOps repository, uh, Argo City picks that change, delivers it to Crossplane, and Crossplane then creates the necessary resources or updates the resources in AWS. So this is kind of dual purpose, GitOps for application as well as infrastructure. All right, so as part of uh, the demo, uh, what I had to do was create a environment uh, that has a Kubernetes cluster because our, our infrastructures, you know, including Argo CD, Crossplane, all of that needs to be deployed there. So what you see here is Argo CD managing itself. So the view here is uh, this Argo CD, GitOps in for demo application, and this application is linked to this repository. And here you can see everything that you see on the left side under deploy is visible here uh, in the Argo City view, which is really good view here. All these applications are either supporting applications or the applications that engineers will care about. Um, all of these applications together um, are making all of this work today, which is pretty common for any uh, Kubernetes cluster and GitOps uh, setup. I will not go into a lot of details here. Uh, this is something you can try it out you know, when that repository becomes public. Um, so using this GitOps way, I am creating everything, all, all the infrastructure in AWS. I am creating uh, the VPC, I'm creating EKS, uh, EKS configurations, then installing a bunch of applications such as uh, Crossplane for IAC, uh, Cert Manager for Certificate Management, uh, Argo City itself, um, and then creating you know necessary other um, Route 53 zones to um, have a URL like you know uh, the, the one that you see in the uh, URL here uh, in the address bar. And um, it has everything. Everything that is deployed in AWS is using GitOps. So this is the setup that we have. Now, um, the challenge here is now as engineer, I have an application um, that needs to be tested, um, uh, that needs to be tested in the uh, environment. So this is my Dave environment. Um, let's assume that this is production plus Dave, or there's an only one AWS account at this moment for this demo. So testing my application uh, is not deployed here. Let's assume that you know application is deployed and we want to test it. So where do we start? Now, if I make a change to the application, uh, and that application is right here, Inside charts, I have a my app. This is the Helm chart. This Helm chart deploys a application. It creates a deployment with the some you know image that uh, has you know the business logic that needs to run. You know process the data, um, and then um, I'm creating a service account to associate uh, so so that this part or the container that launch uh, launch for the my my application uses the IAM role because uh, here this pod will be running in a EKS cluster and and when that pod is running uh, that pod needs to access the S3 uh, buckets by default pod is not able to, will not be able to access the S3 bucket because it doesn't have the necessary permissions so this is the EKS way of doing things if you want to assign a IAM role to an application you do it this way you add a annotation to the service account of that pod and you specify the um, the role name for it. What does that mean is uh, we are not only deploying an application here, but also deploying all the infrastructure pieces along with it. So this is a wrapper module, or uh, you can say a full a application with all the dependencies, infrastructure dependencies in it. So this is something um, to make sure everything is at one place and it's much easier for all the workflows, all the tests, any anything that uh, engineer wants to do with their application. So here, application, it's commented out. Um, 
I don't want to, I don't have the code for that, but let's assume this is the working application. And here um, you can see the class plane specification that allow me to create a policy and uh, a role for it. Okay. All right. So similar to policy, uh, what I need for um, allowing an application to have access to a S3 bucket, I need policy, I need a role and attach that policy to role. The way Crossplane understands that is you create a policy. So you, we supply a policy statement. We supply the trust policy for the role. And this is pretty standard uh, for any case cluster. And then um, in all policy attachment, telling Crossplane that uh, please uh, attach the policy and the role together. So the policies will be attached to a role and we will see that in action. All right, so um, moving on to in the demo, uh, I think, what um, we should do is you now let's make some changes here. So right now, um, oh, I need to explain about the um, the testing as well. So for the testing, um, um, I have this Helm chart um, and I received a input from my security team saying that, hey, uh, the policy that you have is not following the list privileges model. Uh, you cannot have wildcards here. So the change that I wanna do is, you know, uh, comment it out, comment, this one, this, you know, uh, uh, the action with the wildcard in it and have specific uh, permissions uh, to access the S3. Uh, now my challenge here is I don't want to commit this directly in main and break the application. I want to test it first. I want to make sure these permissions are enough and I don't need to add any additional permissions. The application lock will tell me whether application is able to access and do what it's required to do. Uh, but at least I know that for my application to read stuff, uh, these permissions should be enough, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna test this. The challenge here is uh, test these changes without committing into my GitOps repository. So these changes will be on my branch. I have already created a branch. Uh, we are not on the main branch. We are in our uh, GitOps branch. What we will be doing, doing is testing these changes through our PR. We will be creating a pull request with these changes and test that uh, in the same EPS cluster uh, where this application is supposed to get deployed. So what we want to do is let's do a commit here. So the change that we made was um, follow the security guidelines, not have this star. Maybe we will just remove it. I mean, we keep it uh, just for reference. And this is the change that I want to test. And this change is not visible here in the main branch right now. So if I go here, the values have not committed that change yet. So it is still the same. I'm going to commit this. Add charts. These are the only changes. Now I'll be doing the commit here. My app uh, testing uh, updated SV policy for this page. Okay, so I'm going to do a git push now. Um, and there you go, our change is in, in our branch. So if I go back here, I should be able to um, see the change here. I have a new branch here, test my app. So main branch is still without the change here. Um, my test branch has a change, so I'm gonna go ahead switch to my test branch and there you go. I see my new change. Now I wanna test this. This change is not live. So I wanna, what I wanna do is, you know, create a pull request uh, for, uh, for this change. So there you go. I will leave um, these things for later before review. I will make sure I write the description and make it easier for any reviewer to do, um, understand my changes. So these are the changes I'm doing here. I'm going to create a pull request. Now, um, as part of this pull request, um, now how do I change, uh, start, uh, start the testing here? I'm gonna take a pause here and switch to the testing here, how GitOps PR workflow is gonna work here. So in the CI test folder, uh, you can see here, I have created the test specification for 
for my application test. And here I'm, I'm working with the labels here. So based on the labels that I create here, uh, tests are going to run. Um, so here I can see, I can see that uh, the labels expected are these, uh, these two you know, handle the dependencies. So the reason why these dependencies are needed because my app requires us to create the IAM role and we don't want to use existing production IAM role, right? We want to create a separate uh, test IAM role for our test. So what it requires, uh, it requires a creation of new IAM role. And I don't want to utilize the existing cross plane because it might have a you know, security in place, which uh, does not allow me to commit anything in main remember. So because we cannot commit in member, uh, we probably cannot modify the existing uh, uh, EKS cluster. So what I want to do is modify, uh, create a, you know, deploy all of these changes in the new cluster. So here, rather than launching uh, a new EKS cluster, I would go with you no know, V cluster because V cluster uh, is pretty quick and easy to set up. What we will be doing is launching a V cluster into existing um, EKS cluster and then deploy cross plane with all the uh, dependencies inside of that V cluster so that cross plane can pick up the changes that we deliver. Uh, those changes will be with the policy change that we just did and then apply uh, using the test um, IAM role account because Crossman also needs an IAM role to connect to AWS account. Ideally, it should be a separate AWS account, but in our demo, we'll be using the same account. Uh, this test account will be restrictive uh, with a lot of permission boundaries to make sure we don't have any security issues there and uh, is allowed to create only the resources that we want it to create. So uh, a lot of pattern matching, uh, other restrictions that will make your know, security team very happy there. So we will be deploying all of these in sequence and see it in action through the PR. So what we are using here is uh, making use of Argo CD here. We are not using any CI system, uh, traditional CI system. Uh, this is really a nice way of, nice feature of Argo CD to allow you to, you know, process the pull request. So this is the generator, pull request generator that generates the application automatically in Argo CD. It has triggers, labels are triggers here. The moment I create uh, labels, uh, this application gets activated. So if I create these labels, that are specified here, uh, this application set will get activated and it will deploy the application. And look here, what is deploying? It is deploying the Helm chart from the same repository. So we made change to values.yaml here. So this change will be tested at the moment we add these labels. So what are these dependencies here? So in the DAPS folder, you can see this is also a pull request generator. Um, and it has much lesser labels. This is to handle the sequence, basically. All of these are sequence. Uh, weak cluster has to be deployed first so that we have new EKS cluster. And as part of this weak cluster, um, there is you know, weak cluster plus here. Uh, not only deploy the weak cluster, but also make Argo CD uh, you know, manage the weak cluster also. Because all of these other deployments they are targeted for weak cluster. They are not targeted for the host cluster. So weak cluster, uh, this deployment uh, takes care of not only deploying the weak cluster, but also configuring the Argo CD to connect to weak cluster automatically. And then rest of the applications, these dependencies gets deployed inside the weak cluster. And this my app application also gets deployed inside the weak cluster, not on the host cluster. So this gives us the exclusive environment to test our infrastructure changes and application changes out. So there are many use cases. So we're going to focus on one use case today. All right, so um, let's see this in action. Um, let's go back to our PR. Now for the CI, uh, the CI test, uh, I have a separate obviously application that takes care of CI, not this one. This is uh, linked to the main deploy folder, which deploys everything. This is my production stuff here. So if I go back and search for CI test, There you go, GitHub's Info Demo Tests. So this test has all the test specification. These are all pull request generators. Here you can see all the dependencies and my application, everything ready to go. So now what you're gonna see here is notice is uh, the moment we start adding labels here, you're gonna see the action here immediately happening. And you can see notice 
how easy and how quick it is. It is. My That's app perfect. label is already added because the change was done in the um, chart of my app. So there's some automation happening here and there's, there's a lot of automation that you can do to make it easier. Review. The cluster. Okay, all right, so we are back in business here. Uh, looks like Augusty managed to connect to Git repository again. Um, so here you can see successful connection. I'm gonna, you know, be in the interest of time. I'll go a little faster here so you can see uh, Crossplane is deployed. Um, I'll go ahead and add other dependencies as well. And it should uh, deploy those as well. Okay, pretty quick, you know. The moment I add label here, it was you know, showing up here. Uh, I'm using spot instances, so maybe uh, Amazon is taking away my uh, nodes right now. And But amazing that uh, while that is happening, this is still all working well. Okay, so there you go. Uh, ignore this part, I know why this is happening. Um, so these are all, I don't wanna talk more into dependencies here, uh, but this is just creating configurations and they are separate because uh, it has to be in sequence. Uh, for the automation, uh, we don't have to have multiple cross-plane dependencies, just one is enough. Because then you can control um, the sequence of resources creation. Okay, all right, so we, are, we have reached this uh, last one now. So application, oh no, there's one more. And I can go ahead and just, uh, oh, I don't have to do the my app. It will get created. So the problem is it's a little bit slower. This should be created before this. And while um, Augustry is gonna, while Augustry manages this part, uh, we can go ahead and see what changes are there. And there you go. This application Helm chart has deployed um, if you remember, I had commented out the deployment and only left the policy role and attachment. So here you can see um, it is gonna get stuck because one of the dependencies is not there yet. So we will cancel this uh, sync and sync it again the moment uh, dependency is created here. Well, like you said your automation type stuff would probably handle this and just check for status and stuff before moving on to the next step. Yeah, yeah, all of this uh, uh, is very much uh, um, automated can be automated. There you go. It's done. Well, there yep. we go. Uh, yep. So now we can go here and I'm going to stop this sync. Go back here, open this deployment in new tab and just make sure CR is created. Not yet. It's not healthy yet. Now it's healthy. Now I can go and sync here. Um, so here, um, to create IAM role, you need to have the CRDs inside the cluster, right? So the, the previous dependency was uh, responsible for that. So here you can see provider IAM uh, creates those IAM uh, CRDs. And those CRDs, um, without those CRDs, these resources will not be created. So now CRDs are created. Uh, there you go, now you can see uh, policy and role. Now here, uh, Crossplane is in action. So if I open this, uh, you will see what Crossfit is doing to these resources specs. So we delivered a role specification to Crossplane, and this is the policy. And here you can see uh, Crossplane is already at it. It is creating state right now. So the moment Crossplane is done creating it, and all of this is being done by you know using Terraform as a backend. So what it does is it goes to Terraform IAM module downloads it um, and then converts that YAML into uh, Terraform code and then runs the Terraform. So there you go. Um, Crossplane managed to uh, create the um, I mode here for the test. And this role policy, um, it should be automatic. Yeah. So um, now I'm gonna go to AWS account and look for the new role that we did create as part of the test. So there you go. You can see the role that has been created. And this role was created using V cluster in uh, V cluster plus cross in a, its own isolated environment. 
and we did not use the host cluster at all. Thank you so much for checking out this demo. If you want to see the rest of the webinar, go ahead and click one of these links over here. If you want to check out some more information about vCluster, we've also got another video that's suggested. Uh, if you want more content like this, please like and subscribe. Let us know what you want to see next. And we hope this helps out and provides the kind of information that you're looking for when you're trying to figure out how to use vCluster with Argo CD. Thank you.